Hey everybody, welcome back to another Tech Tips with Jaycox Implement. I'm Turner Hagen, the Precision Farming Specialist over here in Laverne, Minnesota. Um, today we're going to continue on with our combine conversation. Last week we talked about how to set up variety tracking and how to take your planting data from Egg Leader SMS, import that into your Pro 700 so that way it will track each variety and let you know how each variety yields. So this week we're going to do a little refresher. Um, some of you may know this stuff already, um, some of you may have forgotten or maybe it's a new combine to you, but we're going to talk about how to calibrate the header on a mid-range combine. So this would be your uh, 088, 130, 140 and 150 series mid-range machines as well as this is applicable to the 2000 series. Uh, axial flows, so like the 2100s, the 2300s, and the 2500s. So, um, anyways, let's hop in the cab and get some calibrations done. So now that we're up in the cab, the first thing we're going to want to do is set our header up correctly for the head we actually have attached to the machine. So where to set those, change those settings is we go to Toolbox, and there's two menus here, Head 1 and Head 2. If I go to head two and I have the header actually hooked up, this will automatically recognize via header recognition what type of head is on there. So um, if that's not grayed out, that means we might have a connection issue uh, going to the header. So that might have to be looked at. Um, but we wanna make sure that we got our style set correctly, rigid or folding. This is a rigid head. I got a 2608 combine or uh, corn head here. And then real type drive, depends on what you got here. Um, this one has a down corn auger, so I wanna set this to real type drive one. And then here's gonna be my sensitivities, which um, we can adjust later in the video, or basically it'll adjust how quickly, um, so tilt and height. So tilt's gonna be how quickly it's going to adjust for tilting terrain and move the head left to right. Height is gonna be the feeder house up and down. How quickly or how suddenly it's gonna move the feeder house up and down. So we can adjust those values once we get things set and we learn our end stops. Uh, header pressure float we will not use since we have the sensors on the combine. Um, and then these are different options too. Again, if you have lateral tilt on your combine, you gotta put that to installed. And this one being a mid-range, this one has the ride control feature, so that's gonna be installed. Then I jump back over to head one here. I want to set my cutting type. So again, this will be automatically selected since there is header recognition. So we'll leave it on row. I just have my correct row width here and my target row width. So my target row is going to be basically what a full head of, of corn would be in here. So eight rows. Then I got my row spacing down here that I can adjust. And then I can also set with overlap and work with reach set. So overlap's gonna be based on where I previously have gone in the field. Uh, it will automatically start reducing the number of uh, rows being harvested. So that way my yield monitor is correct. And same thing with the work reset. So when I go to the end of the field and I raise the head up, when I do that, it's gonna reset it back to eight rows by, by default there. So now we're set up and we should be ready to go. So now we'll fire up the machine and learn the end stops. So to learn the end stops, the one thing you gotta remember with all the mid-range and the 2000 series combines is that I have to have both the thresher and the feeder house off. I do not wanna do this with the, act the thresher running because then it won't recognize it's in calibration mode. And it's actually pretty simple. So what all I need to have to do is I hold my down button for the header lower and I'll hold it, continue to hold it for about three or four seconds. Then I hit the header up button and I keep holding it. And you saw that pause there. So when that paused, it was learning basically where the sensors were not actuated anymore. And then it continued to go up to the top. So by doing that, I learned my end stops now, and now I can use my uh, auto header height function. So now what we'll do is we'll fire up the machine. So 
So now what I can do is I'll go forward, act like I'm uh, going to be harvesting here. And I'll hit my return to cut button right here, which is the symbol with the header on it, and it's got two arrows pointing up and down. So this is going to be my return to cut, and now I'm in header float. So this symbol means that I'm on header float, and that it's utilizing the sensors to lift and lower the header and contour the terrain. To adjust it, there's two buttons that I can do. So if I think that it's too low on the ground, I can raise the header up manually a little bit. And then I can hit my number one button right here. So now it learned that position. And now <clears throat> I've adjusted my height. I can also hit the plus or minus buttons to raise and lower it while I'm going through the field to again fine tune this adjustment. Now if I hit my return to cut button again, it will raise up to my header or my headlamp position, which again, if I want to adjust it, I can drop this down and I can hit number two now. And now it's a, a learn that new value of the return to cut. So now if I hit my button, header will drop down and it will contour the terrain. Again, when I get to the headland, I can hit the button up and I'll be on my headland position. So you gotta make sure too that when you're in the automatic header height position, if you did not see the wave below the header here, it means that you're not in that position so it won't actually utilize the sensors. Sometimes if we try to raise the header up too high, so say I go right here and my sensors aren't actually touching the ground, and I hit that button, well now it's learned the return to cut. So again, I'm not actually using my header sensors here. To get them to be, uh, to use my sensors again, I gotta drop my header down, hit the one button, and now you'll see that I got the wave underneath the header. Now if you need to troubleshoot, say that you're getting sensor faults um, for your, your uh, auto header height um, voltages, what you can do, so this is with both the mid-ranges, so this would be the 130s and above, as well as the uh, flagship combines, I can actually go and look and see where my, my sensor heights or my sensor voltages are at. So if I go to diagnostics and I go to settings, if I change my group to header and change my parameter to, um, we'll do, let's see here, left height tilt sensor. Um, so now on the flagship machine, so this would be your, your uh, 230, 240, 250 machines. You can actually get a graph of this, um, but for the mid-range machines, it only gives you the value. So now what I can do is if I lower the header down and actuate that, now I can see that my voltage went down on my sensor. So generally what happens, especially the first time of the year, these sensors might be a little out of adjustment. So you might want to, you might need to correct the voltage and rotate the sensor either clockwise or counterclockwise to get it to the correct, correct voltage setting. And again, pretty easy to do. You can just change it. I'll go to my right one now and I can look at that value and see that it is changing the voltage correctly and the range is is correct there. So just a little tidbit there on being able to troubleshoot uh, the header height sensors. So again, that was how to do automatic header height calibration on the 2000 series combines as well as the mid-range combines. So again, the 130, 140, and 150 series machines. 
Um, the big thing, again, to remember with all these is you gotta do this calibration with the thresher off. If you do it on or running, it won't actually take the calibration and you'll be scratching your head on why it's not working there. So in the next video, there, we'll be doing it on a flagship combine. So that'd be your 230, 240, and 250 series machines. Um, it's a little bit different on that process, so we'll cover that on the next one. But until then, make sure you uh, leave a comment, like the video, and subscribe, and we'll see you next time.